One of the big reasons we balance chemical equations is to find the mole ratio. The coefficients, those are ratios between substances. In this video, you'll learn how to write mole ratios and then how to use them to solve common chemistry problems. Here's how it works. First, you balance the chemical equation. Bam! That gives you the coefficients. These are ratios between the substances in the reactions. And we often think of the coefficients as ratios of moles, the mole ratio. If you have moles of one substance and the coefficients from the balanced equation, you can use the ratio to figure out moles of the other compounds. Let's try one. We have a balanced equation, and here's the question. We want to know the ratio of O2 molecules to H2O molecules in the reaction. O2 to H2O. We can see O2 has a coefficient of 1, H2O has a coefficient of 2. That's a 1 to 2 ratio. For every 1 O2 molecule, 2 H2O molecules are formed. But this is the mole ratio, so we think in moles. For every 1 mole of O2 molecules, 2 moles of H2O molecules are formed. Pause and write the mole ratios for these. So far, so good. But performing chemical reactions in the lab, we often have numbers like 0.45 moles of O2 molecules. So how do we get the same ratio as we have in the balanced equation? Often we can figure it out just by looking at the coefficients. If we have a 1 to 2 ratio for O2 to H2O, this would mean we have twice as much H2O. So instead of 0.45 mole, we have 0.90. You could also figure this out just by setting up a ratio. 0.45 is to 1 is x is to 2. We set that up. 0.45 over 1 equals x over 2. And to solve for x, we can cross multiply. 1 times x, that's x. 2 times 0 0.45, 0 0.90. And that would be the moles of H2O, which is what we found before. So this is another way to look at the ratios. That's pretty much it. If you're wondering where the 0.45 moles of O2 came from, that's just what's given in the question. Pause and give this one a try. So we have twice as much hydrogen as we do oxygen. That means we should have 0.8 moles of O2. For water, since the coefficients are the same, we just have 1.6 moles. Pause and give this one a try. At this point, you should understand that we balance equations to get the coefficients. These coefficients tell us the ratio of moles for each compound. But as long as the ratio is maintained, any set of numbers is valid. Let's look at how we can use mole ratios with more challenging problems. So for this problem, the equation is already balanced, so we don't need to do that. And we have a 4 to 3 to 2 ratio. So let's write down what we have and what we're looking for. We're asked how many moles of Fe molecules. So we don't know Fe. Let's just call it X. And we're given 0.27 moles of oxygen molecules, so 0.27. First, we can estimate. We see it's a 3 to 4 ratio. So 3 is to 4 as 0.27 is 0.3 something, 0.35. So we have a general idea of a number that we'll end up with. Next. We could just look at a ratio. We could say x is to 4 as 0 0.27 is to 3. And then we could solve for x. 3 times x, 3x equals 1.08. We divide both sides by 3. x, that equals 0 0.36. And that's going to be the moles of Fe. So we're pretty close with our estimation there. So this is one way to do it. There's another way we should do it, though, and this is often preferred by teachers. It's the same thing. We're using a mole ratio, but now we're treating it as a conversion factor. And to do that, we can use this equation here. So we take what we're given and multiply it by our mole ratio here to figure out what we're looking for. So let's write some numbers in. We're given 0 0.27 moles of oxygen. We multiply that by our mole ratio, and then we'll figure out what we're looking for. And we're looking for moles of iron. One way to remember how to set your mole ratio up is that it's desired over the given dog. So our desired, what we're looking for, is moles of Fe, and we're given moles of oxygen. 
Now, all we need to do is go up and look at the coefficients, four moles of Fe for every three moles of oxygen. We multiply 0.27 times four, that's our 1.08, divide by three, and we get the same answer, 0 0.36 moles of iron. What's nice about this is that when we multiply the top and divide by the bottom, moles of oxygen cancel out. We're left with moles of Fe, which is our answer here, and we know that we've done it right. So estimating and then using one of these two methods, preferably this one, will get you the right answer. Let's try one more. So in this problem, we see that the equation, it's not balanced. So we do need to balance the equation first. If we put a two here, that would give us two nitrogens. We'd have two times three, six hydrogens, but we could put a three here, and now it's balanced. So we have 3.8 moles of H2. And it says we have excess N2. That just means we have a lot of N2, this nitrogen gas, and we don't need to worry about it. And we want to know how many moles of NH3. That's the one we don't know, the ammonia. So we can estimate three to two. So it looks like we'll have less, maybe around three moles, something like that. We could set up a ratio like this, 3.8 is to three, as we have the X to the two. So three times X, that's three X equals two times 3.8, 7.6. We divide both sides by three and then X gives us 2.5 moles of, we're finding X for the NH3. So that's one way to do it. Let's try it with the conversion factor, our mole ratio. We'll put our equation up here to help us along. Moles given, we're given 3.8 moles of H2 of the hydrogen. Multiply that by our mole ratio, and we're looking for moles of NH3. For our mole ratio, we have our desired. We're looking for moles of NH3, and we're given moles of H2. So we go to our balance equation to get the coefficients. We have two moles of NH3 for the three moles of H2. So we multiply 3.8 times two, divide by three, and we end up with the same answer, 2.5 moles of NH3. This is on the top and the bottom, cancels out, we're done. After a while, using the mole ratio as a conversion factor really becomes second nature. This really is the preferred method because you can use it for all kinds of other conversions like moles to grams. So pause and try this one by yourself. Some teachers require that you use conversion factors and show your work. But understand, we're just using coefficients from the balanced equation to find the ratio. You can estimate first, and that'll help you make sure you get the right answer. You can find the explanation for this problem and more practice in the mole practice video listed in the description of this video. To recap, a balanced equation shows us the ratio of moles for each compound in the chemical reaction. If we're given a certain number of moles for a substance, we can use the ratio from the balanced equation to figure out the moles for the rest of the compounds in the equation. This is Dr. B with the mole ratio, and thanks for watching.